Hey everybody, Zach here with another fly tying tutorial for you guys. Um, you've probably seen we've done a lot of steelhead and river stuff as well as some warm water stuff. We haven't forgotten about you still water guys and you're probably all familiar with these. Um, so this is one of my go-to chronomids for a lot of lakes. Um, I tie this two variations. So this is the black, chrome and olive. And I also do it in a straight up chrome and olive as you can see. So same materials, um, just different finishing. So I'm going to be tying up the black chrome and olive. Um, I call these the CO chronomids. Uh, obviously chrome and, chrome and olive are the main colors, so that's what we go for. The only main difference is this one has a full chrome body. I wrap up the, the ribbing um, separately, whereas this one I keep some thread wraps and a little bit thinner uh, tinsel. Um, yeah, so let's hop to it. This isn't going to be one of those marathon flies that we we do with the steel heady stuff. Uh, these go together quite quick. So I'll leave hook choice up to you, but if you are a stickler for that kind of thing, uh, this is a Mustad C49S. It's an old trusty with a 332nd white bead. Uh, we're going to need two threads. One's going to be a 70 denier black and a 70 denier like burnt orange, um, which makes a really good wing bud um, collar for a lot of these flies. So I literally start my thread right behind the bead. Take a few wraps there, grab my scissors, trim away the excess, and I'm literally going to start tying in materials pretty much behind the bead. I just got to loosen off tension a touch here. There we go. So the body material or the ribbing material is a product called Span Flex. You'll see this called uh, Midge Flex or Stretchy Floss or there's a million different names for it. Uh, comes in a bunch of different colors. We have a few of the different ones at the shop. Uh, this is the the olive color. Um, it's kind of cool. It's, it works really good in steelhead patterns too um, for rubber legs. Be really good on twitching jigs. But this is really stretchy material. Has a crazy little funky bend to it, so resists water quite well if you're using it as rubber legs. Um, this one we're going to use it as a rib. Um, the cool thing about it is that it stretches a lot, like a lot. Um, the more you stretch it, the more transparent it gets. So whatever you have underneath kind of shows up. So there's a few tricks to working with this stuff. So when I tie it in on top, if I can get this to seat there. Oh, oh, missed it. There we go. I like to leave a little nub. And basically what will happen is I'll tie this in forward to tie that piece in. And each wrap squishes it right into underneath the bead. So I take some nice tight wraps, one over top of the other. You'll see it kind of sucks into the bead there. Helps kind of build up a bit of that taper that we want. Now, as I wrap down the shank, I'm going to slowly pull this and pull this and pull this so you get that nice fine taper that we want for, for chronomids. So I'm just going to keep stretching it as I go, trying to keep this right on top of the hook shank. And we just keep going, 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 till about there. Now, on my way back up, I'm going to tie in my other body material, which is the uh, the Mylar tinsel in gold silver. And this is the small size. If I was doing the opposite version without the black, I would probably use a medium. Just goes up the, uh, the body a little bit quicker. So the thing with this stuff, it's gold on one side, silver on the other. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up. We want to tie in um, the gold side facing out, so that way when we wrap, the silver side goes forward. So I'm going to tie this in pretty much the length of the body. It's kind of spinning on me there. There we go. I'm going to tie that in. And up the body we go. Touching turns. Doesn't really matter that uh, there's a little bit showing there because we're going to go back down. And we're going to keep, we're going to go about two thirds of the way down. I don't like to do too many wraps to taper the body. I'm going to go back up, right to behind the bead. You can see this body taper starting to form. And I'm going to go back down about a third of the way here. And then back up. And just a couple wraps there, right behind the collar, just like so. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to swap out my thread. So instead of whip finishing and building up a bit of bulk, I'm just going to start my burnt orange. I'm going to wrap over those strands that we have going there twice, kind of like you would when you're securing a dubbing loop. And I'm going to lock that all in place and trim away. Alright, 
Now I'm going to rib my stretch floss, so I'm going to stretch it again. I'm going to get some nice, uh, again, the, the tighter it goes, the thinner it's going to be. So I like to have a nice, uh, I like to build up that taper as we go. So I start fairly tight, and I slowly loosen off the tension as we go. And we just keep going. Looks like I got a little stragglers there, the thread. And I slowly get bigger and bigger. When we get to behind the bead, I'm going to do a couple snug wraps here. Three, three in front. Now there's a trick with this stuff. I'm going to pull this straight up, and I'm going to get some of that stretch in there. And when I cut it, it actually sucks itself back into the thread wraps. So just to be safe here, I'm going to throw in a whip finish. Just a two-turn finish. One, two. And that'll stop it. If I bump my bobbin or anything, those thread wraps aren't going to come undone, which is good. Now I'm going to use the chrome part. So I'm going, this is where a rotary vise comes in handy. I'm going to find the gaps in between the olive. And I'm going to wrap this up. And by doing this, I get a little bit of black thread showing through. And I'm not squishing down that olive span flex. I'm going to take this up right behind the bead. A couple wraps there just to kind of secure it in place. Just fold it over, just wrap back on itself, trim that guy nice and close. Now I'm just going to build up a little bit of a collar. Just going to really tuck in that, uh, that tinsel. Try to really cover that up there. Try to make it nice and pretty. Fish won't mind too much. And you can do this with a different colored bead if you like. Um, if you do so, you may want to add some gills. Build that little collar and rip right into a whip finish as I drop my bobbin. Again, this burnt orange definitely acts as a, uh, a wing bud kind of color. Looks quite natural. I have pumped a few out of fish and they, they look just like this. Now we're almost done. That's the finished tying portion. I'm going to take um, my favorite. Um, body coating, which is Solarez Bone Dry, comes with a nice applicator brush. This where having a rotary vise is very nice. I can just rotate it, hold the brush there, get a nice even coating on the body, come up over the wing pads there, over top of the bead to help protect the paint, and keep rotating, stops it from drooping on you, and I hit it with my UV light. And I slowly stop rotating just so I can get a good cook on all four sides of the fly. So I start on the top, rotate it to the other side. This stuff doesn't take long, which is nice. Other applicators like uh, two-part epoxy and Sally Hansen stuff does take some time to, to finish curing. So the UV definitely speeds that process up quite a bit. And just like that, we have the finished copper and olive chronomid or the CO chronomid. This one definitely slays fish. Um, it's a go-to in my box for sure and it should be in yours as well. Uh, if you got any questions come into the shop and we can help you get the set up and uh, we'll see you next time.